what do you reckon we uh, try and fix a DVR? Cam view, DVR1. Model, DVR1. 8 channel. Oh, all 8 of them on the back there. Uh, we have a probably a composite video out, HDMI, VGA, some audio, some networking, USB, and our power in. So what's wrong with it? Apparently it uh, makes noises, but there's nothing on screen, so I'm not starting up for some reason. Looks like a bog standard power brick. Has a light on the end, so we know it's on. And uh, comes to one plug, standard DC barrel jack, and it connects onto an adapter so that it can power all of the cameras and the uh, DVR itself. So let's plug that in, confirm the diagnosis. I believe the owner said it was set to HDMI, green light, but I'm hoping that we'll get signal out no matter what, but I'll see what happens. Get you a shot of the LEDs there, we've got power and hard drive I think, so there's no switch, I'm just going to have to plug it in and it should come alive. Whoa, look at the power light rapidly flashing. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but that's flashing. Yeah. That instantly tells me that the um, power supply cannot start up. Either, either the power supply itself has failed and can't supply the required current, or there's a failure in the unit which is causing a overload of some sort. Let's do a load test on the power supply. So this power supply is rated at uh, 12 volt and 5 amp. So, uh, see if we can plug in the side here. There we go, we've got 12 volts on the screen. Let's get you a closer look. We're at 12 volts, let's start increasing the uh, current there. Whoa, look at that. Dropped right away. Let's uh, start with some fine adjustment. Whoa, hey! <laughs> 200 milliamps and it can't even do five... Oh, look at it, it's all over the place. Wow! This is one of the worst power supplies I've ever seen. You can't... Yep, the light on the power brick is actually flashing as well. That's impressive. I would have thought I'd get like maybe 500 milliamps out of it. <laughs> Those capacitors are shot on the output, guarantee it. Now I'm going to run the DVR off the uh, bench supply. Make sure this unit's still functioning, because if this is somehow being cooked in the process of the failure of the power supply, then there's really no point continuing, is there? So, turn it on. Have a red light. I heard the hard drive spin up. Ah, here we go. And it's booting. Aha! Now this may be glued or uh, um, sonic welded or whatever they do along there. Um, I find a, a flat on the seam and a bit of a impact from a hammer and that cracks it loose you just got to be careful you don't hit it too hard and punch right through and stab something which I've come close to before seems to be doing the business. And uh, you get a nice satisfying crack when it does let go. As you might be able to see, there's a gap formed already there. When you get your screwdriver in the gap, tweak it up. The 
but uh, anyway, flip over and repeat. Righty ho, and then she just falls apart. Careful where you put your fingers. We don't know how discharged the main input capacitor is yet. And a careful look around the heatsink. It appears these are our points for the capacitor, and we're at 18 volts. That's not going to hurt anyone. And there's our output caps, and as we can see, one of them is bulging, the other one is not. But uh, who knows how cheaply it's built if it can't maintain you know a little bit of current and it's got two caps on the output doesn't appear to be any uh, dry joints in there so we'll replace that and uh, we'll probably find that it can't even do five amps do I have any of those caps may as well replace both of them the other one's going to be just as old and just as bad especially if it's a particularly no-name brand of capacitor So just checking the ESR on that, I mean we know it's stuffed, the lid's about to pop off it, but uh, if we have a look there, and we're getting, so we've got 5 ohms, 5 ohms and climbing slowly, yeah, definitely toast, if we have a look at the other one in circuit, that's right down at point 0.03 so um, that's still really good condition and what's interesting I noticed having a look at the um, circuit is they've got uh, here's your main uh, rectifier diodes let's see actually I'll get you a better closer look right so here's your transformer output uh, ground and uh, positive comes through our main diode rectifier pack uh, over here around the corner and down to our capacitor and uh, so this is taking the brunt of the uh, ripple this has to filter the brunt of the ripple off the switching supply um, then what it actually does is goes through an inductor here where it meets up with the second capacitor uh, and then through to the output um, and that's interesting that they put that through an inductor which might actually be helping again to further smooth uh, this side of things, which is why this capacitor is uh, a lot less affected by um, by old age. It's uh, it's got less of a hard time. So I think we could replace just the one, to be honest. And as luck would have it, I do have one, which is actually uh, a couple that were kindly donated by a. Uh, work colleagues so uh, you'll be happy to know they're being put to good use especially since we both know the owner of this device so it's kind of cool so let's try another load test now safety first all right unplug the other end <laughs> before plugging in that end. And that way you can hang on to it and know that you're not going to die. And then you can put this somewhere safe out the way and then plug it in. Back at the dummy load, we'll reconnect it and there we are 12.3 volts, that's what we had before. So let's wind the wick up and see if there's an improvement okay 
600 milliamps and holding 12 volts. That's a good start. Let's keep going. Remember, this thing was supposed to be rated for 5 amps. So there's 2 amps. So if we hit 5 amps, that's about 60 watts worth of power. Coming up to 3. 11.8, 11.9. Anyone know what percentage variation is acceptable? Based on, you know, ratings and such. Okay, there's... 4 amps, 11.7, that's actually pretty good, I think. Nothing would sniff at 11.7. Most of the cameras hanging off the end are going to be dropping the 12 down to 5 and 3 anyway to operate. Well, the fan speed just dropped. Why did the fan speed drop? Anyway. Let's go to five. Five amps, 11.6 volts. I can't even hear it squealing. Well, maybe it is a fairly well built unit. I won't stress it too much. We'll pull it down to three amps and I'll let it run for a little bit and just make sure that uh, cap's not getting too hot or anything silly like that. Pretty sure it's a low ESR cap that I've got. It's not exactly spelled out on it though. Okay, so let's have a look. Stick my thermocouple on the caps. Just out of curiosity. And see what they run at after a few minutes at uh, 3 amps there. Woo! Nice and warm. And there's our replacement cap. Whoa. New one's right up there. 60 degrees. <laughs> About 46 for the other one. Ah, she'll be fine. What does the sticker say? 105 degrees C rated. Here we go. Might be too hot to touch, but it's not too hot to handle. So it's an 8 channel unit, and I did notice that when I powered it off the bench supply, it was using about 400 milliamps to run the unit itself. So if we add a little bit more on, say half, half an amp or so, when it's under load perhaps, it might use a bit more. Um, but it does have a mechanical hard drive in there, so maybe that's the peak that we can see. Um, and 8 cameras so we've got five amps to play with um, there really can't be all that much uh, uh, that the cameras use maybe about half an amp each I think this thing might be running at capacity well I've seem to have run out of uh, super glue but what I do have is acetone so I'm just gonna see if this is ABS plastic just take some acetone and drop it on there and see if it dissolves it. Yeah, it looks like it is. So um yeah, we can we can use that property of acetone to glue the thing back together. By melting it back together. I just use a, a Q tip and load it up. Get it nice and full. Run it down the seam. Fill it up. Give it time to get in there and 
do its job. Squeeze it together. And hold for a bit. Ta-da! Now let's not forget the final test. We know it'll work. We're professionals. There we go. Well, I know that wasn't really intellectually stimulating, but I uh, haven't done a video in so long. So, here we have it. Nice and easy. Could have just gone out and bought a new power supply. That would have also worked. But where's the fun in that?